What up, nerds? This is Clay Cooper from Prep Expert. I've got a perfect score on the SAT and on the ACT. And today, I'm going to show you a simple way to understand and solve difficult average questions on both tests. So average problems show up on pretty much every SAT and ACT. And now, I don't want to talk to you about them because I think you don't know how to find an average. I'm sure you do know how to find an average. Uh, however, the test makers find ways to test averages that are really difficult. Uh, it's not as simple as just adding up the numbers and dividing by the number of numbers. Uh, they can make it really, really difficult. They can frame average problems in a way that makes them super confusing. So it helps to have a regular, consistent approach in how we attack average problems. It helps to have a formula that we can always rely on to help us solve average problems. So let's take a look. This is the formula I use. Average equals sum over number of numbers. Now, again, I'm not pointing this out. I'm not giving you this formula because I think you don't know how to find an average. I'm sure you do. I'm giving you this formula because if you master using this formula, it can help you on even difficult average problems. Let's take a look. What if I had a data set that had two four, six, and eight in it. And I wanted to take the average of that data set. Well, uh, you might be able to just look at this data set and tell that the average is five. If you can, that's great. You're right, it is. But that's an easy average problem. They're gonna get harder. So let's practice using the formula. Average equals sum over number of numbers, right? So average equals sum, two plus four plus six plus eight, the sum of all the values in my set over the number of numbers. How many numbers are there in this set? There are four numbers. So. My average then is 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 6 is 12, plus 8 is 20, over 4, my number of numbers. My average then indeed is 5. So we got the same value, but we used the formula instead of just kind of braining our way through it. And that'll pay off when the problem looks more like this. A band of six pandas supports itself by robbing banks, and the mean earnings per panda in January was $1,300. If the January earnings of the leader of the band are removed, the mean monthly earnings of the remaining five pandas in January becomes $1,200. How much did the leader of the band earn in January? So as you can see, this is a much more difficult average problem, but the formula that we used on the previous slide can help us here. So let's write down first what we know. We know that there are six pandas in the band and that their mean or average earnings in January as a band was $1,300. So I think the average earnings for the whole band in January will be the sum total of the whole band over the number of pandas in the whole band. Uh, we know that the average overall was $1,300. We know that uh, there were six pandas in the band total. We don't yet know what the sum of all of their earnings was. However, we can calculate that. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Let's take a look at the rest of the problem. We now know that if you remove the leader of the band, if you remove his earnings or her earnings from the uh, total earnings of the group, the average becomes $1,200. So let's write that down. So the average we found before was the average of everyone. The average total is the sum total over the number of numbers total. Now let's find the average of the five pandas who are not the leader. We'll call that average sub five. I think the average of the five pandas who aren't the leader is the sum earnings of the five pandas who are not the leader over the number five, which is how many pandas there are who are not the leader. And we can complete that formula. They tell us that that average is 1,200. So now how do we use that to find the earnings of the leader? Well, I think that the leader's earnings, we'll call that E sub L, the earnings of the leader. I think that the leader's earnings can be found by subtracting the sum of the five pandas who aren't the leader from the sum of everybody. In other words, if this is the sum of all the pandas, and this is the sum of all the pandas without the leader, then subtracting some five from some, from some t will tell us how much the leader earned. And we can find both those values. So I can calculate what some t is. All I have to do is multiply each side of this equation by six. When I multiply each side of the equation by six, it cancels on the right, and then six times 1,300 is gonna be 7,800. So it looks like my sum total of earnings for everyone in January was 7,800. What about my sum for the five pandas who aren't the leader? Multiply each side by five. Five times 1,200 is 6,000. So the sum for the five pandas who aren't the leader is 6,000. I can plug both those numbers in. Again, E sub L, the earnings of my leader, 7,800 minus 6,000. So it looks like 
the sum earnings of my leader are $1,800. So it's a great example of how if we've mastered the average formula, we can use it on even really difficult average problems. That's all I've got for you today about how to solve difficult average questions on the SAT and the ACT. Please don't forget to throw us a like if you found this video helpful. You can also subscribe to Prep Experts YouTube channel for other videos just like this one. We'd also love it if you'd suggest a topic for our next video in the comments. Let us know what you want advice on from a two-time perfect score. There's a coupon code below the video in the description that you can use on our website for discounts on any of our products. You can get money off of a course with myself or another instructor or money off of tutoring if you'd prefer that. So until next time, keep working hard.